Brett DiBiase. Now, this is the son. Uh, apparently, his real name's Dale as well, so I don't know where Brett mm-hmm. came from. So, uh, this is something that actually happened last month, but I want to bring it up because it's a serious issue, and it's actually a big news story that actually involves uh, NFL. Was he, I don't know if he's quarterback, but he was a big NFL star. Yeah, Brett NFL. Um, anyway, so this is from uh, Mississippi Today. Uh, Brett DiBiase, his real, uh, sorry, a former f- uh, professional wrestler and son of WWE's Million Dollar Man, pleaded guilty Thursday to a new federal charge that involves his brother Ted, Teddy DiBiase Jr., as an alleged co-conspirator. The plea signals that DiBiase may act as a witness in the federal government's ongoing investigation into the Mississippi, uh, Mississippi welfare scandal, in which officials misspent or stole tens of millions of federal welfare funds under the administration of former government, uh, go- government governor Phil Bryant. I'm sorry, I'm screwing this up. While Teddy DiBiase has not been formally charged, federal authorities hinted they were zoning in on the older brother when they attempted to seize his $1.5 million Dollar Madison home in 2020. Teddy DiBiase was also included as an alleged co-conspirator in the Bill of Information that former welfare director John Davis pleaded guilty to in September. Now, to boil all this down for everybody, uh, it's a very complex case. Brett DiBiase and the family were brought into uh, the administration of Mississippi's welfare program and temporary assistance for needy families program for, and this is a quote again from the uh, article, employee training and motivational speaking, opioid abuse awareness, youth mentoring, development of a phone app to track teens and workforce development. While they received payments up front, many of the programs never came to fruition. Now, we're talking nearly nearly $100 million of federal money that's gone to what's supposed to go to the most needy in poss- is it the poorest state in the union, Mississippi as well? Uh, Mississippi, yes, yes, it is. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> so uh, I'm sorry, I've got more to read to you before you you, you jump in. Um, the prosecutors have called these contracts shams, and the entire program has long been accused of being a scam, where federal funds are diverted from their intended goal and put in the pockets of wealthy benefactors. Aside from the DBAC family, the most high-profile benefactor is the former NFL star Brett Favre who, it's alleged, received a seven-figure sum for speeches he never gave, $5 million for an indoor football facility, another seven-figure sum for the construction of a volleyball arena that, coincidentally, his daughter played in, and $2.15 million that went toward a pharmaceutical company that, coincidence upon coincidence, Favre was a major investor in. Brett DiBiase and former executive director of Mississippi Department of Human Services John Davis, who worked directly under Bryant, the governor, are the only people to be charged with federal crime so far, but the FBI currently has Teddy DiBiase in the sights to potentially charge him in the near future. John Davis hired Brett DiBiase in 2017 to a six-figure year job, and I'm laughing because I know what's coming up. Despite Brett not being qualified for the role, Teddy DiBiase, despite not being an employee of the state, occupied one of the largest offices in the Mississippi Department of Human Services. Brett is being sued for $824,000 for services he he did not perform, but he did allegedly receive $160,000 from Davis to house him in a luxury rehab facility in Malibu for four months to tackle his painkiller addiction, and that's not for the first time that he's had to go to, go to rehab. Prosecutors even have a text exchange between Brett and Davis where Brett asked what the name of the non-profit he worked for was called. While Ted and... <laughs> <laughs> which is, that's amazing, isn't it? Uh, while Ted oh, and it Teddy... Is amazing. Only a wrestler could do this. (laughs) And it's written down as well. Uh, It said both improperly, this is uh, Ted Cena and Teddy Jr. received uh, uh, funds improperly, totaling around $5 million for the family, which makes up a sizable chunk of the money that make up part of the state's biggest fraud case in history. Brett faces up to $250,000 in fines and up to five years in federal prison. I'm sorry for all that reading, everybody, but it's a long story. Dutch, your thoughts? Can we say guilty? And we say guilty. He's he's already he's I already pled guilty. Yeah. I, I heard about this five six years ago. The wheels of justice turn slowly, mm. and I mean I can't even begin to imagine some of the the things that they've done. They cannot have all this information because. They had to undergo state audits. Where is this money? Where did this money go? And I don't know where it got, where it went. Uh, yeah, it went straight you know, into someone's pocket. It always does. But if I, I think Ted, he could possibly go to jail. I'd say that. I like Ted. Senior or junior? His son. Yeah. Well, I like all of them. I don't know the kids that well, but I know Teddy pretty pretty decently. 
I think he's he may go to jail or have to pay off a ton of money. So if he has to pay off a ton of money, I can see Mr. Uh, I can see him going back on the revival trail and doing revivals all over the South, taking big money, taking offerings for people to give to Christ. And I don't know, I, but I do think there is a lot of underhanded stuff going on here. The guy Davis, he had to be aware of this too. I mean, who would send somebody to Hawaii to a rehab center? Don't they have rehab centers in Mississippi? It was it was Malibu actually, but much of a muchness in the, this case. Oh, it's in California. It was yeah. in California. But that's just part of it. And Mississippi is a poor state. I'm sure they do have some drug addicts there that could actually benefit from these programs, but it's a state program. Graft is nothing that's they're unaware of. And I'm, I, I want to see what happens in this case. Did they just get mad at, at the uh, DBSs? Are they just mad about the or what, but something's going to, something has to break break on that. Now I had thought up to like a year ago, they had settled this. I mean, I, you know, when it goes off the news, the, the national cycle, and I didn't, I didn't check local news in Mississippi, but I hadn't heard anything about it. So I thought it was all, they paid a fine or they did this, they did that, but it's ongoing. They haven't even had a, a civil, a civil trial yet. Right. Uh, no, I have this full... would be civil and this would be civil and criminal. It would indeed, yeah, both. So I think the future doesn't look good for the DBSs, the father or the son. Br Brett is looking at the business end of potentially a quarter of a million dollars in fines and up to five years in jail. For well, this. five years, me five years. For the amount of money they're talking, five years doesn't seem to be the right amount of time. I think it would be more. Now I don't know anything about I don't know anything about law, but five years is a, a gift almost. Even the two hundred and fifty thousand dollars is a gift. Because they say he stole how much money? Something Up like a hundred million? No, no, no. In total, that was a hundred million in uh, misappropriated funds. The DiBiase family were looking at around five million, and Brett personally, what was it about eight hundred twenty-four thousand? Personally, that uh, he's on the hook for. Well, good luck, but that, that, that is taxpayer dollars. That is people paid it in good faith, and and Graft is not. It's not new to government. Other people do it, but this is making the news. It oh, would make the news anyway, whether they were wrestlers or not, because that's a lot of money. Mm. And it's a it's a it's a strong local story in Mississippi, as it should be. But but you know, uh, Teddy found the Lord. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah. He's an it. he's an evangelist. And now, let me tell this quick story. All of a sudden, Ted finds the Lord. Now, he found the Lord after he got caught with this mistress. <laughs> and then he went for rehab, and he admitted that he was a sex addict. That's the only reason that he had this woman, I guess. And then all of a sudden, he he he, he goes out and starts doing revivals. And yeah, Teddy DiBiase was a big wrestling star, not only in the United States, but in Mississippi, especially. So when he came to a local church that had like a, a 2000 congregation number, yeah, they sold it out to be packed. When they pass that plate, you know, people throwing 20 and 10s and sometimes 50 and maybe a hundred. There's no telling how much money he made off that, which is not reportable. Mm-hmm. Are the tax-free amount? It, I, I well, I don't think it's. 
And if it is reportable, <clears throat> I'm sure that the total sum of the donations was never put down on paper to be looked at by the internal revenue. There's no telling how much money, and I call it scamming. And this is when I first got my first thought of how organized religion is like professional wrestling. It's the same deal. You have a building. Wrestling has an arena. You know, religion has a church. You have your believers. They come and sit down. Instead of buying tickets, they they take donations. And how many times do you think that donation plate goes around? About three times. Really? It goes around about three times. Oh, yeah. I've been to some of those Southern revivals. And, and then they have music. It's a spectacle. You have stars. Like wrestlers, the wrestling show has its wrestling stars, but religion has God, it has Jesus. They have the New Testament. And, <laughs> and the God. preacher. Oh, yeah. And uh, the preacher preaches out of a book that tells him what to say. And Ted DiBiase getting up there, he's a great talker. So they got a show. That is, to me, the connection between organized religion, revivalist religion, and pro wrestling. It's the same thing, if you really think about it. You've got to talk them into the uh, building, Dutch. That's that's uh, a another... God. Do, God. God does that. Jesus does that. Christians will come. Give them a reason to believe. <laughs> and they all they'll always believe you give them a reason to disbelieve and teddy never gave them that and i heard some of his revivals were great then guess who got into it jake did jake the snake now brother i would i would actually pay a hundred dollars <laughs> to go see a jake the snake revival i really would and then guess who else got into it Tully. Tully Blanchard. Oh, Tully I guessed it right well. Yeah, Tully got into it. Did you ever see I'm Buddy Landell? You... He was he was a preacher. And, and one, Buddy Landell. Oh my God. Buddy Landell used to preach at me up and down the road between the hits of cocaine. <laughs> He'd be preaching the New Testament to me, and I'm looking at him like, Buddy, please. And doing like a hundred miles an hour. He actually he had a he bought a Mercedes one time. Now it wasn't a new one. And Buddy would say, Well, it ain't new, but by God, it's a Mercedes. He's trying to be Ric Flair, is what he's trying to be. And he actually burned the transmission out of it one night when he did 100 miles an hour in second gear or in not drive, but he put it down in second. And because he had burned his transmission up, and that's the only way it would drive in second gear. He didn't have that car much longer after that. He just, it just finally broke down on him. But I, I love buddy, great, great guy, great guy. But he just had a, the the drug problem. I love that you said. Hey, that. I've been, I've been around, I've, I've been around some. Since you brought it up, I've been around some real winners, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but they're really, really memorable. They really are. With, with where you just said that, well, it wasn't a new. Mercedes, it was second hand. Yeah, but it's a, a Buddy yeah, Landell but, was a second hand Ric Flair <laughs> in presentation as well. Well, Buddy got fired right at the time they were going to put the belt on him. Yeah. They were going to take it off Rick. And he used to tell me these stories. Now, I thought it was the cocaine talk. I went, shut the fuck up, Buddy. I mean, in a nice way. He said, no, man, no. And he was telling me all this. But then when they got ready to put the belt on him, he went on a binge again and failed to show up for TV. That's when Dusty was there. I don't know what year this was, <clears throat> but he, he had it all handed to him. And he had J.J. Dillon as a manager. They, they had him set to go. But Buddy has always been his own worst enemy. And he died. When did he die? About five or six years Something ago? Something like that. I'll look. I'll look. Seven. He calls his daughter, and I knew his two daughters. One had gotten killed, I think, in an accident. And he just didn't want to go on anymore. He was way back in the hills of Virginia somewhere. What's it say? 2015, you were right. About eight years ago. And then he just went off and 
How did how did he die? He was suicide. Uh, I will Wikipedia it. It says Landell was involved in a car crash. Uh, he was hospitalised and reportedly checked himself out against That's doctor's right. wishes. Eventually returned That's to right. his home in, uh, Ch- is it Chilhowy, Virginia? He told his yep. wife down he was Chilhowie. feeling bad and then he died in his sleep. Yep. But I think he wanted to die. Mm. But anyway, rest <laughs> in peace, buddy. I love, I, yeah. I love that guy. Uh, uh, just to wrap up the whole thing with Ted DiBiase is... First off, he uh, does the old Lloyds of London scam. Then he gets into preaching. Then this whole Mississippi thing, misappropriation of millions of dollars. See, when somebody tells you who they are, believe them. And if somebody said, but did you, would you ever think that Ted DiBiase would be involved in something like this? And I would look at him and I'd say, you got to be kidding. <laughs> no, really? Uh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> we See, wrestlers think everything is a work. That's, that's what they think. And they'll never get caught. Mm. But 